With more than 42,000 restaurants in over 100 countries, Subway has the most locations of any fast food chain on the planet. And at first, that sounds like a sign of a thriving subgiant. However, Subway is anything but. Subway's closed thousands of stores in the last three years and saw a 25% fall in business from 2012 to 2017. So what happened? The chain began as Pete's Super Submarines in Bridgeport, Connecticut in 1965. Three years later, co-founders Fred DeLuca and Peter Buck rebranded it to simply Subway. Subway's famous giant footlong sandwiches are made right before your eyes, the way you want them. What was so compelling then, and still is today about Subway, is really an open kitchen format. In many ways, they really pioneered that and the ability to customize your sandwich. The brand redefined fast food with fresh ingredients that customers could see. Compared to other fast food chains at the time, it felt healthy. And it worked. By 1981, there were 200 locations across the U.S. And soon after, Subway went international. In the late 70s and in the 80s and in the 90s, everyone knew about Subway. I mean, they, they were everywhere. They're still everywhere. That's Joel Labava, an expert in franchising. While each store looks and smells the same, they're all independently owned franchises. The format is pretty simple. You buy a franchise, you get trained, they help you secure a location, they help with a grand opening, and you're, you're open, you're open for business. Follow the several hundred page operating manual, do the advertising, and customers will come in. Not only were Subway franchises successful, they were, and still are, one of the cheapest chains to franchise. It costs between $116,000 and $263,000 to open a Subway franchise. Compare that to opening a McDonald's, which costs up to $2.2 million. Because Subways were easy to open, the number of stores skyrocketed. Between 1990 and 1998, store locations rose from 5,000 to 13,200. And in that same period of time, gross sales rose by about $2.1 billion. Subway's success continued into the early 2000s. At a time when obesity was rising rapidly in America, Subway continued to market itself as a healthy alternative to fast food. One of their biggest successes for sure was the Jared Fogel story. Everyone remembers those ads where it's him in those huge pants where he's showing how he lost all of this weight. And that just made them so much money and it really made people think about Subway as a really great health brand. It was one of the biggest advertising wins that any chains had in recent decades. So that was a huge, huge part of their brand. Subway carried Fogel's success story for nearly a decade. But by 2008, the world was suffering from the effects of the Great Recession. And for many Americans, hunting for deals replaced the obsession with weight loss. So Subway changed up its message. In March 2008, it introduced a new promotion that would come to define the chain. By August 2009, as other restaurant trains were struggling through the recession, the $5 footlong had pulled in $3.8 billion in sales for Subway, a 17% jump in U.S. sales from the year before. But even the best deals run their course. Starting in 2014, Subway sales began steadily dropping. Behind the scenes, many of the reasons for Subway's success had turned on them. Quiznos was once Subway's main competition, but tons of subchains like Jimmy John's, Firehouse, Potbelly, and Jersey Mike's, and fast casual chains like Panera were offering seemingly fresher and healthier options. And they started stealing market share. They're competing against people who bring in fresh produce every day. A lot of Subway locations only bring in fresh produce once or twice a week. On top of that, fast food chains that had been around as long as Subway were coming up with healthy alternatives of their own and getting creative with new menus. More and more fast food chains really want to have that innovation pipeline where they're bringing something out new almost every month. Fast food places are looking for ways to bring in new customers, drive traffic, and Subway has not tried to do that in the same way other places have. But other fast food chains weren't the only competition for Subway franchises. With Subway's franchising model making it so easy to open locations, stores inevitably started opening up around the corner from each other in lucrative markets. Take downtown Manhattan, for example. Within a 15-minute walk and less than half a square mile, there are 10 Subway locations. 
And these locations in close proximity began cannibalizing each other's sales. The Subway franchise agreement, the contract, it says they can open anywhere. There is no protected territory. So franchisees really have no say so in where the other franchisees are going to open. It's a problem. And Subway Corporate wasn't stopping it because the company benefited from a high number of locations. More locations meant more franchising fees and high royalties to Subway Corporate, which diminished the effect of falling sales from a single location. When franchisee sales are kind of slipping, as long as they're staying open, it doesn't necessarily hurt Subway as much as it would some other chains. If everyone's kind of like chugging along, like opening new locations, then they can kind of keep on keeping on, and it's not gonna be the end of the world for the corporate office. Franchise owners, on the other hand, took the hit. In 2012, each Subway franchise generated an average of $482,000 a year. Four years later, that number had slipped to $422,000 a year. For comparison, the average annual revenue of a McDonald's franchise in 2016 was $2.6 million. And to make matters worse, Subway would lose the face of its company. In 2015, the man who had embodied Subway's Eat Fresh mission was charged with possession of child pornography and having sex with minors. Subway cut ties with Fogel, and he was sentenced to 15 and a half years in federal prison. And the Jared Fogel thing kind of basically went from a huge positive to a huge liability, like the worst things possible that your brand could be associated with. All of these things created the perfect storm for Subway, and soon locations started to close. In 2016, Subway closed 359 stores in the U.S. It was the first year the chain closed more locations than it opened. In 2017, that number was over 800. And by the end of 2018, over a thousand locations had closed. With all these sour ingredients, it's hard to imagine Subway could bounce back. But the chain is certainly trying. In 2017, Subway launched its Fresh Forward program, starting with remodeled stores. The revamped locations featured new menu boards, Wi-Fi, USB ports, updated furniture, and music. I will give Subway credit. They're doing something interesting. They are, they're offering grants where if a franchisee applies and everything's in line, they can get up to $10,000 towards remodeling. By the end of 2020, over 10,000 locations will have this new restaurant design. But Subway says food is its next priority, and it's backing it up with an $80 million investment in updated menu items. Subway's partnered with the media company Tastemade to develop hundreds of new menu ideas, like the green goddess tuna melt and the southern style French dip. In 2018, the chain introduced its cheesy garlic bread, its most successful promotion in the last five years. And in 2019, a line of ciabatta sandwiches and halo top milkshakes hit stores. Historically, Subway would evaluate about six or seven new menu items per month. But we've set up a process and invested in capabilities where we're literally testing at least 100 new menu items uh, every month. As for whether or not all these menu items and revamped designs will stop shuttering stores and dropping business, only time will tell. They need to figure out who they want their customer to be. I think it's really an uphill battle for them, but if they kind of go back to the basics, think about what people want, ask people what they want, and think about a little bit more innovation, that's kind of gonna be a good start for them.